Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're talking about your welcome email. It's the next step in the 25 things I do to grow my blogging business. And I'm going to share with you six things that you need in your welcome email. It's probably not what you think. My name's Leslie Peterson, and I help bloggers turn their modest websites into thriving online enterprises with SEO, email marketing, and a little hard love encouragement to always move forward consistently and with a plan. Okay, let's begin by defining the welcome email. So hopefully, if you've been following me for any amount of time, I've convinced you that you need a lead magnet and ideally multiple lead magnets or opt-ins on your website in order to collect email addresses. So your lead magnet might be, well, a common one is a packing list or um, my 10 favorite books. Um, download this list of my 10 favorite books or here's the five best places to go on vacation with your family or you know, 30 um, amazing recipes to help you meal plan for the month. Anything, um, a free content, any piece of free content that you offer your audience in exchange for their email address is a lead magnet. And you're going to use your email system to deliver that lead magnet immediately after someone requests it. The next day, you're going to send them a welcome email. And it's that email that we're going to be talking about here. Now, that welcome email should be sent before you drop them into your newsletter campaign or any uh, sales series. And if you're thinking, Leslie, I don't want to do a newsletter campaign or I don't know how to get started with a newsletter campaign, I really want to encourage you to do that. It's a fantastic way to connect with your audience, which is a list of people that you can communicate with whenever you want without any concern about algorithms, either social media algorithms, Pinterest algorithms, Google algorithms, they're your list. And it's a great way to nurture that list. So if you're looking for ways to connect with your audience through a newsletter, I would encourage you to head over to lesliepeterson.com. That link is in the show notes below. And look for our freebie, my lead magnet, which is 52 connection ideas. It applies with to any niche out there, regardless of what you're blogging about. It's a great way to connect with your audience and it's free. So go and check out that list. Okay, let's keep talking about the welcome email, which will come after your lead magnet, before your newsletter or your sales series. And here's what's great about a welcome email eight out of 10 people will open it. People are really expecting to get one of these nowadays. And that's about four times as many opens and maybe 10 times as many clicks, according to HubSpot, as other emails. And the great thing about a welcome series is that it keeps people engaged and it weeds out the people who are really not a good fit for your audience. Let me give you an example. We have on my Atlanta travel blog, so this is a blog devoted to helping people in Atlanta know what to do around the city, and then people around Atlanta or in the Southeast understand um, what to do when they're traveling on vacation, really around the Southeast. Now, we, we do dabble outside the Southeast because Atlanta is the biggest airport, but it's usually for people who live in the Southeast. Um, it's a great way for them to understand what's available for them. Now, I have a post where we rank number one for adult Christmas movies. I am a Christmas movie buff. My husband and I love Christmas movies. We've um, categorized them, ranked them, given reviews. That post is just uh, one of my favorites, and it does really well. And people often opt in for it, uh, opt in to um, our newsletter through that post because we've got a Christmas Um, lead magnet on there. But if they're living in a really small town in Washington state, or they're not really at a stage in their life or a place in their life where they can do a lot of travel, um, we're probably not a good fit for them. And they're going to see that in the welcome email that we send to them. And they're probably going to opt out. And I'm okay with that. That's totally fine. That's ideal, in fact, because I want the people who advertise in my newsletter, 
um, the people who um, are represented through partnerships in my newsletter to really be in front of all the perfect, perfect people. And that welcome email does that. So let's talk about the six things that you want to include in your welcome email to make sure that you've got the right people on your list. The first one is the opportunity that you're presenting or that is presented to your user that you're going to um, really be driving home. So imagine if you've got the perfect person for your newsletter on the hook and you want to present to them the opportunities that you're offering. A great, great way to segment into this is to say, have you ever dot, dot, dot. So in my example, I might say, have you ever wondered about the perfect places to spend your vacation dollars around the South? Not just the ones we always hear about, but those hidden gems. It's the have you ever, have you ever wondered how it's possible to homeschool your kids on you know, $5 a month. Um, have you ever wondered how to meal plan uh, for your family using primarily an Instant Pot or air fryer? It's that opportunity that you're providing for them. Have you ever is a fantastic segment into that opportunity. And then the second thing you'll say, maybe in just the next sentence, is you're identifying the problem. So remember, you have a blog because you're answering questions. Even if the keywords that you pick or the titles that you use um, aren't questions or direct answers to questions, they are still answering questions. Um, people are looking for help with something um, in the form of typing keywords into a search console. And so what is that problem that you're solving? What is the what is the solution that you offer? And I want to tell you, in order to get this right, you have to understand who your target audience is. Because gone are the days where everybody is your target audience. You can't be a food blogger or a travel blogger for everyone and continue to be successful today. It's just not possible. So you really need to dial in that target audience and understand the problem that they're facing. It might look like this. Don't know how to, I'm guessing here, um, weed through all, of, I'm going back to the homeschool curriculum again. Don't know how to weed through all of the, the copious amounts of homeschool curriculum out there and find the best one that's right for your, for your kids. So maybe you're actually targeting um, families who want to use curriculum in their homeschool. And it sounds like they're probably just getting started if they they don't know that. I've been homeschooling for a while. I understand the curriculum. We don't really even use a curriculum. So I'm probably not your target market. But somebody who's just starting out, you're saying, hey, there's a lot of options out there and I'm here to help you as a beginner. If you have a travel blog, I think about our travel blog. We travel with our family mostly um, and we um, also travel around at, you know, our blog is focused on the travel around the Southeast. So that's really who we're targeting. I'm not targeting couples. I'm, I mean, you can definitely use our blog if you're, uh, you know, a solo traveler or a couples traveler, but you're going to notice there's things in there to do with kids. There's information about why this hike worked well with kids and this one didn't work well with kids. So I'm really nailing down my audience. Um, maybe you do RV travel and uh, that's um, that's the type of person that you're targeting. Or maybe you're, you're targeting people who are really outdoor focused. Like they want, when they go to a destination, they're really interested in the camping and the hikes 
And yeah, they they might go to a museum. They might see the, the main attractions, but that's where you're heavily focused. So you've got to understand your target market and what problem that they're after, that, that they're looking for a solution for. And you're going to really call out that problem. Are you feeling overwhelmed by? Don't know how to. These are the types of phrases that you'll use to understand that. So you're telling people there's an opportunity out there for you to feel this way. But are you really feeling like this? And that's when you say, I was too. Or um, you're, you're, you're kind of sharing your story. And that's number three. You're sharing your breakthrough, your success. For some of you, it might be um, I didn't really understand how to do, how to find the, you know, the right homeschool curriculum for my kids. I went through this process of reviewing them and whatever the process was that helped you to really nail down these key pieces of information or distinguish which one's right. It's, it's your success path. For others, like I'll think about myself. I grew up traveling. My dad was in the military. You know, we lived overseas in multiple places. I've always been traveling. I've always done it. And that's my quote unquote success story. I've been traveling my entire life and as a child, and now I've got a family of four and I've traveled with them since they were in my belly and we've gone through a season. We've gone through infant travel. We've gone through toddler travel. We've gone through tween travel. We've gone through teen travel. And now I'm learning how to travel with my adult children. We've got, we've hit all the stages and I'm here for you to support you on that journey. So that's, that's my success story. So even though I didn't have a particular breakthrough, it's kind of saying, this is where, this is the angle I'm coming from. This is why you should listen to me. So what's your breakthrough? What's your success story? Notice here, I'm not starting with, I'm Leslie and I've traveled a lot and I'm here to help you. This is number three. So I'm starting this welcome email with the subscriber in mind. Here's the opportunity before you. Here's the problem you might be facing. And now here's why I'm a good person to help you out. So that's the, that's steps one, two, and three, or, or the first three things that you should have in your email. The fourth one is sharing your best posts. So if you've got multiple personas, we've talked about multiple lead magnets, especially if you're in my Facebook group, which is free by the way, and there's a link down below. I hope you will come and join us there. We've talked about separating lead magnets by personas, the personalities, the, the, the types of people that are going to come to your site and the way, the, the reason that they're going to come to visit you. So for me, for example, I've got Florida travel. I've got date night travel. I've got locals who are interested in particular events. Um, I've got coastal travel. I've got outdoor travel. Those are the ways that our um, content is organized, it's the type of people who come and visit us. It's the multiple facets of Leslie that's re- reflected on the blog. And so what I will do is I will put a representative best post from each one of those personas in the, in the email. So I'll say interested in date nights away from your kids. This isn't date nights for somebody who doesn't have kids or date nights for teenagers or date nights for empty nesters. This is for escaping your kids. Um, here's a list of date nights. Then here's a list of the best outdoor activities in Georgia. And here's a list of the best um immersive events going on in Atlanta, I'll put a representation from all of those personas, a best post representation from all of those personas in the email so that everyone who is ideal will have a taste of what it's like to follow us. But also I can use my email system to tag them based on how they click through. So I really understand a little bit more about this particular person when I get ready to do a sales promotion or something like that. Okay, so that's number four, your best posts. If you don't have personas yet, you might just grab the top three, top four. But if you do have personas, if you do have multiple facets of your blog identified, 
um, then put a best representation for each one of those. Number five, this is where you're going to address any objections. And not objections of why they should stay on your email list necessarily, but why you're the, if they, if they don't understand why you're the right person, why you're the right blog to be the end all be all for solving their problem. So this is usually found in the form of you're probably wondering, or you might be scared by. So let me give you an example of this with, again, with our Atlanta blog. You might be wondering why we are a great family or a great resource to help you out with this information. Well, we've lived in Atlanta for 30 years and we have four kids and here's their, you know, here's their ages or I've got, you know, one's a teen, one's a tween, two are adults. That sort of, you know, if somebody is coming to you and saying, why should I even listen to you? Then this is where you're going to break down, break that down. Or if you have a product on your blog that you're getting ready to sell, I'm thinking about just uh, earlier this week, our interview with Megan came up, Megan Bannister. She's got um, two great books, um, Things to Do or a um, Hundred Things to See in, I'm probably getting this wrong, in Iowa and then a Supper Clubs in Iowa. And so she might be really interested in, in the future, selling those books to her audience. So she's going to say, you're probably wondering why I'm a great person to tell you about Iowa. And then she can share just a little bit outside of her her own story, but kind of maybe developing her authority. I've got two great books that I've written about Iowa. I've lived here for X number of years. I've been to, you know, 117 of the 120 cities in Iowa, whatever the case might be. So this is where you address any objections up front. And again, remember these, these things. And so far that was our fifth one. These things are, might be paragraphs, or they might just be one or two sentences. This doesn't have to be a novel. It's a very short and sweet email where you're laying the foundation. So don't be intimidated by these things. Okay, so we've done five now. The opportunity, the problem, your success story, your best posts, and your, uh, addressing any objections. You're probably wondering why, blah, blah, blah. And the sixth thing you wanna do is to challenge them to engage with you. And both of those both of those words are important. Challenge them to engage with you. So do it in the form of a challenge because a challenge makes makes people engage or, or um, engage more. And the engagement is going to help the future deliverability of those emails. So the best way to do this in my book is to ask them to write back to you. And don't expect an overwhelming response, but I love it when people write back. So you might say, write back and let me know how long you've lived in Iowa, what your favorite recipe is, which one of these blog posts re uh, resonated with you mo more than the others, what's your favorite place to visit, what's your favorite soup recipe, what homeschool curriculum have you tried in the past? Challenge them to engage with you. And my favorite way, you don't have to do it this way, but my favorite way is to ask them to write you back. And don't just say, write me back, please, and let me know, blah, blah, blah. But I challenge you to hit that reply button and let me know which one of these curriculums you've tried before or how many times you've bought a homeschool curriculum that failed, something like that. That kind of wording really call them to action. And then that engagement is absolutely going to help build a fan loyalty, increase the open rates, and uh, not just for that particular user, but that sort of engagement also kind of lifts the bar for all of your deliverability. So let's go over a few do's and don'ts when you're doing your welcome series. Number one, don't sell them anything yet. Now, I know you are going to be linking out to your blog posts. If you've written a book or you have some sort of authority, you're going to be mentioning that, but don't focus on selling them something just yet. You're still on a first date with this person, so let's just focus on getting to know one another, building trust, 
and authority with that person. Gosh, that sounds just like SEO, doesn't it? But that's the same thing that you're going to do with each and every subscriber. Number two, I mentioned this earlier, but don't open with you. This isn't about you. This is about them. So your opening should really be about that opportunity and problem that they are facing. Then you can talk a sentence, two, three, not much more than that, about your breakthrough and success, your story. And then later, uh, maybe in number five, maybe when you're building that, uh, when you're talking about objections, you can build authority by mentioning um, why you're a good person to solve the problem again. Now, if you've got multiple lead magnets on your site, and you know me, I think you should, then you want to make sure that you only send this once. So if somebody uh, signs into your, or I'm sorry, signs up for your lead magnet the first time, you'll send this over. And the second time, you won't send this again. So you'll have to do, in your email mar uh, management system, you'll have to do a check. Every time somebody signs up for a lead magnet, You'll go and look, you'll create a decision point where you go and look and see if they've received this email in the past. If they have, then you'll skip. If they haven't, then you'll send this. And then uh, going back to that, um, the beginning where we, where we don't talk about you, we talk about them and their problem and their opportunity. I really don't want you to skip this part. It's easy to just go, okay, well, this is a great Great uh, framework, Leslie. Thank you. But I don't really know what my, who my target audience is. I don't really know what, exactly what the problem is. So I'm just going to skip over this part. <laughs> don't skip over this part. This is a really easy part to sk skip over, but a really important one. And if you don't get it right the first time, that's okay. You can keep massaging it. You can keep changing it up. Maybe you, you get, uh, you get one problem statement down and then, you know, a couple days later you have a a beautiful brainstorm or somebody replies back to you and they say something that really triggers for you, oh, this is a better way to frame that problem, then just go into the email and change it. And then all the new people will get the new one. Not a big deal. Put something out there and then massage it. Don't be scared to put something out there. And now listen to this. If you've got multiple lead magnets, remember, I think that you should, um, then the main problem will be um, different for each one of those lead magnets. So here's my example. I told you I have a lead magnet for um, people who are local to Atlanta and they want to know, you know, what's kind of what's going on right now. And that's where I would send them information about um, what the current events are going on. And then I have another one for people who like to get outside and they want to do kayaking or mountain biking or hiking, that sort of thing. So the problem statement's going to be different for those people, even though they're both my target audience. So I might say to the outdoor people, the problem might be, uh, you really don't know where to go to put in your kayak or find the most, best mountain biking trail or um, those unique hidden gem hiking um um, expeditions, it can be really overwhelming. And I totally, I totally get it. For the out the events, it might be, are you feeling overwhelmed by the number of events in Atlanta? You don't know where to invest your money or which free ones are worth trying to find a parking spot for? Uh, we got you covered. So those are two different problems. And they're, I'm, I know which problem to, um, to call out based on which lead magnet that they signed up for. So you might have different welcome emails based on which lead magnet that they sign up for. And that's totally okay. But remember, you're going to have your best posts for each persona down in, in all of them. So you're going to see the other types of personas that this person's a good fit for. And it's okay that they're only going to see one of those welcome emails based on their first lead magnet that they signed up for. That's okay. You do not want to send this welcome email to people more than once, even if they're showing you that they're interested in a different persona. And the challenge that I have for you today is to get your welcome email up. Not a perfect one, not the best one, just get one up. Get one up. Can you do that before the week's out? Can you do that? I know email marketing as a blogger can feel really tricky and a little overwhelming, but I want you to push the fear down. You've totally got this. You've got a six-step 
process to get your welcome email up now. Remember, it's not you're not writing a paragraph for each one of these things. A sentence or two will do. Can you get it up before the week? Head over to our free Facebook group. Let me know when you get your welcome email up or when you make some changes to the one you've got. I would love to hear from you.